Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Well, I have something different for you, but it kind of relates to scooters and mopeds. Essentially, these are the modern day moped. If you're older, you recognize you know, the, the mopeds from the late 70s, early 80s. Well, now we're in a whole nother generation of vehicles that perform like what a moped would back in the 70s. These are all various configurations of electric bicycles. There's so many different types of electric bicycles out now. Everything from the hub drive commuter bicycle that I've showed in the past, which was made by Piaggio. They no longer make that. Uh, we've sold Gen Z electric bicycles that have a hub drive, very much like this genuine CU500. And you have the latest generation that's just very, very popular along all these coastal beach communities here in San Diego. So might as well just go with the flow. A lot of people are buying them. Uh, no license required here in the state of California. These are all class three electric bicycles. I'll tell you a little bit about what that means. Uh, pretty much they all go 28 miles an hour uh, and have minimal pedal assist. Um, you have a throttle on all of them. You could pretty much do no pedaling at all if you want to. Um, and they have anywhere from 500 watt motors to 750 watt motors on both these Genuines and, and Monday electric bicycles. So I'm just gonna give you a quick summary of what we have available uh, here in October 2022. Um, obviously, we hope to expand on this. They're very, very popular here in, in California, and I see how it could carry over to a lot of our customers that are looking for something much lighter weight that you could put on the back of a truck, an RV, unlike a gasoline scooter, or even electric scooters. Eventually, I'll do a review, you know, comparing something like these electric bicycles to a 30 mile an hour electric scooter. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. You may say these are very value oriented, especially considering how much some of the electric scooters that you put a license plate on and technically need a motorcycle license here in California um, or a moped license, driver's license. Um, but the bicycles have many of their advantages being lighter weight, easier to operate, and just less costly. So the price brand of these electric bicycles is anywhere from about $1,700 to about $2,900 for these Mondays. All right, I'm gonna do a quick summary of each of these bicycles. Look out for the full reviews of each of these in the future. Uh, well, first of all, all the electric bicycles we sell, they're not, I wouldn't say they're fitness-oriented bicycles. You don't need to put that much effort into them to operate them. In fact, you don't even need to put any effort into them if you really just wanna twist the grip and give it no pedal action. Um, and they'll accomplish getting up all the hills here in San Diego, which is you know, something that's kind of a problem if you're not a well-seasoned bicyclist. I tend to ride, I don't know, 50 miles a week on my regular pedal bicycle, so I'm pretty accustomed to using my legs, but I know a lot of people want to get into bicycles or just use them for commuting and don't want to uh, break out a sweat operating a bicycle on the public roads. And San Diego is currently improving a lot of the bicycle infrastructure with dedicated bicycle lanes, uh, especially in the coastal communities and you know suburban areas like North Park, um, even downtown urban areas. There's a lot of new bike lanes and many of them are protected and you're able to operate these in those lanes. Obviously they go much faster than regular bicycles. Um, so you do need to be aware they can be dangerous. I'd, if you're an adult, you don't need a helmet, but I would certainly recommend wearing a helmet, preferably one that may be rated for electric bicycles since you're going a little bit faster than, um, than typical commuting on a pedal bicycle. So this is the genuine GU500. It's the lowest price point. It's nice and lightweight, weighs about, I would say about 50, 55 pounds. Pretty easy to lift if you had to put it in the back of a truck or a van. 
Of course, just like any bicycle, you're going to need to bring a padlock with you. Uh, you can see the battery is attached here. It's got one little extra feature. I saw there's a USB charging port right there. Um, not the most integrated battery. Aluminum frame. Uh, it does have a derailleur. you got seven speeds. So if you have no electric power, uh, this pedal assist bicycle is still easily able to um, keep some speed up because you'll be able to use your gears a little bit better. Uh, you turn it on and there's essentially five different modes and that the modes limit how much assist and the top speed. So mode five pretty much assist all the way up to 28 miles an hour, sometimes even a little faster. If you go downhill, of course, you can go faster because you'd be coasting. If you're in mode one, it assists about up to 12 miles an hour. And like I said, they need very little pedaling to kind of get them going. So you could either throttle them by pedaling these bicycles or you can twist the grip. Uh, these have mechanical disc brakes. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with the lower end mechanical disc brakes, you do need to adjust them more frequently versus the higher end bicycles that have hydraulic disc brakes. It's got a one size frame, so I would say it would comfortably fit a rider anywhere from about 5'3", five, 5'4", five, up to somebody who's probably, you know, 6'2", six, 6'4", six, six, you know, it's a pretty good range, just all around bicycle. I know standard bicycles, sometimes they have several different frame sizes, um, but since you're not put much cadence into the pedals. Um, it's pretty much adjust the seat and get the handlebars into position to where it's comfortable. Another cool feature, they all, the electric bikes we have, have headlights and taillights and a brake light on them. Little bell on there. Um, it does have suspension with a lockout. So, um, you know, it's firm if you're looking for a higher speed ride. If you're on bumpier surfaces, you may want to turn the suspension on. Uh, that definitely helps. Pretty large size tires, you know, more, more on course with what you see on a beach cruiser. So they're gonna handle expansion joints and potholes and all that kind of stuff a lot better than a traditional road bike or something with uh, thinner 700 size tires on it. So let's go on to the next one. Again, this one's 500 watts, goes about 28 miles an hour is the maximum assist and has, I think, a 524 watt hour battery. And speaking of charging the batteries, they take a couple hours of charge from a regular household um, outlet. And you may ask what the range is. Well, pretty much all these, they'll easily do like about 25 miles of assisted ride, riding, but it completely depends on how you ride it. If you put it on the minimal assist where you're just assisting at 12 miles an hour, you may be able to ride it like 60 miles with all assisted. If you're pedaling a lot, obviously you're not going to use the battery. If you're going to put it in 28 miles an hour and be going up hills all the time, full throttle, uh, your mileage may drop to something more like 10 or 12 miles. So just keep that in mind. It varies drastically on how you use these uh, electric bicycles. So here is the genuine XS750 and it's a 750 watt hub motor on there, XS750F. Uh, similar setup as that GU500, it's got seven, seven speeds so you can shift it. Like I said, it's not necessary. You pretty much can leave it in any gear and you just start giving it the, it detects when you start pedaling and will assist. Again, it's got suspension in the rear. I kind of like the style of this. This one's got the old school moped look to it. It looks kind of like a Gorelli. This is a hydroformed um, aluminum frame. And probably my favorite feature is how well they integrate the um, battery. See, it comes with a key that to lock the battery in there. So you turn the battery. It's got a larger 750 watt hour battery. Not so it goes a little further and it just drops right out. And this one's definitely got some heft to it because it is a larger size battery. Move in a little bit more weight. There's a power meter on there as well. And you pretty much just pop it right in here. I found the mechanisms very, very nice and it just latches. And the nice thing is you do the key, it doesn't drop right out. There's a lever right up here. Uh, the charge port's right there. And this is probably the heaviest bike that we have. I would say this thing weighs, I think I give a little struggle, 80 or 90 pounds. 
Um, pretty much operates the same. It's got a little bit more deluxe instrumentation, but it's got the five different speed modes, bell, and kind of a little bit of a pitfall for a heavier uh, pedal assist bike. It does have mechanical disc brakes, but bicycle parts are pretty standardized, so you could technically upgrade it to um, hydraulic brakes. And the last feature I kind of like to talk about is the charcuterie board on here. So maybe you're going to the picnic, you can bring your uh, fine sausages and cheeses and breads and cut them right up on this a nice bamboo uh, cutting board. That's not really what it is, but that's what it, I thought of right when I first saw it. Kind of nice little touch to add a little wood to it. Um, again, if you're you know, using this for a commuter, you probably do want to have a pretty decent sized chain. It still is, somebody can walk away from it. Unlike regular scooters, you can't lock the steering column. It's more like a bicycle. But this one's constructed in many ways more like a motorcycle. It's got actual motorcycle style of wheel with a motorcycle sized axle on it. And the headlight's pretty good as well. All right, so here is the Monday Top Tank. And I really like the style of this one because it's got that very retro Top Tank moped style to it. Very reminiscent of an old Pook Top Tank moped. Um, and this one is at the highest price point. They do use much higher end components on it. Many of the parts are metal. It's still very lightweight. It's actually, I think, the lightest weight model we have because they've used quite a bit of aluminum on this. It's got hydraulic brakes for front and rear, so you don't need to adjust them. Uh, they're gonna be a little bit stronger. Again, 750 watt motor, uh, 28 miles an hour. And I can tell you this one accelerates quicker than the two genuine models, but you're at a higher price point. Let me check how much gas has got in it. Oh, the Vespa gas cap. But thought it kind of matched pretty good. If I owned it, I probably would put glue that gas cap there just for the fun of it. Uh, it's kind of got the classic banana bench seat. Uh, kind of these little side panels that are reminiscent of a flat tracker. It's a single speed because it's very heavily assisted. This definitely isn't a bicycle that you just want to ride with a dead battery all day with a single speed, but it is possible, you know. In many ways, it's like a hybrid, you know, you could, if you needed to, you could pedal home when your battery's dead. Um, you're kind of wondering where the battery is. Well, it's where this faux fuel tank is, and I'll show you that shortly. Uh, these do have no suspension. They kind of got the hardtail frame, and they got solid forks on the front. You got the large, beefy tires on it. Uh, they do have some knobbiness to them, so they would be suitable for riding down an, uh, a trail or some sand. Um, if you're just using them urban all the time, I'd probably air down the tires a little bit. You get a little bit of sus balloon suspension out of the tires. Um, it's factory, they come with a headlight and a taillight, so you can use them at night. Uh, the controls on them, they have a couple more buttons that's a little more deluxe, a buffing um, electric controls. Uh, it's got the mode that's real easy to read on here. The battery level is very easy to read. It's just a better quality screen. And you just see that you pay a little bit more, you get like kind of better quality components. Although I'll say the genuine ones, they definitely give you a lot of bang for the buck. Uh, with the exception of the mechanical disc brakes, I think that's probably an upgrade I would do on either of those uh, bikes, but it's definitely possible to do that. Uh, parts are pretty standardized, like I said. Um, but definitely the coolest style. You got the classic top tank moped here. So let's see what's underneath the tank here. All right, so you take the little faux tank off and it conceals the 672 watt hour battery pack, 48 volt. Got the little power meter. The charge port is accessible without removing this cover. I just want to show you what's underneath that little tank there. It does have an included key so you can remove the, the battery if you like. You can actually purchase an extra battery Maybe you have a backpack, put another battery in it. Um, all up to you if you want to do something like that. So go ahead and turn the key, slide the battery back, and it's got these finger connectors. This is a very, fairly standard uh, Buffang style battery. I've seen this on other electric pedal assist bicycles. 
Um, you got the little charge port and the power meter. So I guess technically if you wanted to, you can leave the, the bike in the garage, take this in your house or office and charge it in the house. But again, it's got the charge plug under here as well so you can get easy access to it. All right, well, thanks for watching. Again, look out for the future reviews I'll do. I'll do some full critical reviews of all three of these models on our YouTube channel. And take it from my perspective where I've had lots and lots of scooters, vintage and modern scooters, motorcycles, and just regular pedal bicycles. So I kind of am curious myself what it's all about having these newfangled electric bicycles for commuting around. And I'm kind of curious if it will suit me. I know if I was gonna buy one, I'd probably buy the Monday or the XS750 just because they're a unique style. That's something I don't really have. I have several bicycles in my own collection, mountain bikes, a road bike, and along with a commuter pedal assist electric bicycle. It's very different than these style electric bicycles. Like I said, so many different electric bicycles. Even I got a lot of learning to do to understand all the differences between them. But look out for those reviews. Thanks for watching. And if you're curious and want to check these out further and you're in San Diego, feel free to stop by our showroom at 3955 Pacific Highway. We have them all on display. You can take one out on a test ride and maybe it's the perfect thing for you. Until next time, Robot here.